On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks need some help. They're attached to a couple names in some trade rumors. Let's talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks. NBA champion. Yeah, Mavericks. It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. And cutie, cute, hearty laugh in three. Welcome, you are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to comment anything below. Which player is the number one player on your trade wish list for the Mavs right now? Making a list, checking it twice, going to find out who's getting traded to the Mavs. Not, not. you're nice. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below. Joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The trade thought, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? No, it's more what you got for me because you're being so... If you're not watching on YouTube, Nick had something. He's like hiding it off screen. He's like, I'm going to save it for the pod. <laughs> look, no telling. Look what came in the mail today. Whoa! He got the Imaginariums. Look at that. Look at that. I love the colors on them. So I got the new Luca one with the, uh, the Luca Jordan ones with all the colors on it. I'm loving them. Loving them. That's good. Super comfy shoe. Yes. That's yeah. Good, very good comfy. colorway, too, by the way. If you haven't seen the Imaginariums, uh, I think Luca Doc Kicks uh, tweeted about them a while back. But uh, I tweeted them out today, way. too. If you just go to, go oh, to mine, okay, okay. But there you go. Oh, but yeah. Today's pod is about trades. And in two days, you're listening to this actually on the 14th, most of you. And uh, the day after that, which is tomorrow, getting all my days mixed up. <laughs> majority of the league, like 90% of the league is available to be traded. Oh, yeah, let's go. That whole uh, restriction is lifted for majority of the players who are signed over the offseason. And yeah, I mean, typically nothing happens on the 15th. But I think, you know, a lot of us consider... Hey, this is like the opening of trade season, right? This the 15th of December to, you know, the trade deadline in February. So trade season will be officially open, like Isaac said, on Thursday, the 15th, when the majority of the league, 90% of the league is available to be traded now. And there's a couple of rumors recently. The Mavs are connected to John Collins. We talked about his name. The Mavs are connected to Boyan Bogdanovich. His name. There's also... That Kyle Kuzma wants out of of Washington, which who wouldn't want out of Washington right now? Uh, and then I got a bunch of other names I want to throw at Isaac too. Some have been connected to the Mavs, most of them have been not, but I know that are available because they've been in some of these Sham Sharania, Michael Scotto, Eric Pincus type stories recently. So we'll talk about all these names on today's show. Well, let's start with ones that have actually been connected with the Mavs. So uh, let's start with Bogdanovich because he's a name that like we both agree would just be a great fit in Dallas. He would help a lot. He's a bigger wing that can get 20 points on a given night, can play decent defense on a, on a given night. He could definitely play within the Mavs' defensive scheme for sure. Uh, he's 33 years old. He would just fit so well with the Dallas Mavericks, and he has been connected to the Mavs. So according to um, – this one was The Athletic, right? Uh, Bogdanovich's oh, Bogdanovich strong play has led numerous playoff contenders – uh, around the league, expressed interest in trading for him, including the Lakers. <laughs> I don't know why they started the playoff caliber teams list with the Lakers, but here we are. Uh, mm. Lakers, Heat, also them. Uh, Mavericks and Hawks are the four teams that have been linked to Bogdanovich. Now, he has not necessarily been made available by the Pistons just yet. It seems like they're kind of unwilling to engage in talks with him, but Cade Cunningham is now out for the season. He's got season-ending surgery on his shin, so he's going to be out for the season. So, why wouldn't the Pistons trade him right now, Bogdanovich? I, I know I was I was really bummed when Cade went down because I was high on Detroit this year in the in the sense of I thought they would be a playoff you know, a play in team. Yeah, that was kind of like one of my bold predictions for the year, and and I loved when they made the trade for Boyan because I'm like, all right, I love when young teams like that they're looking to take the next step, add a solid vet who can fit in uh, with their team, and man, like Boyan's having an incredible season so far. Yeah, he is. I mean, Age 33, he's averaging over 20 points a game. He's shooting 44% from three this season, over 50% from the field. Um, 
yeah, I'm with you on this. You know, we're talking about you know, like three specific targets today, and then you have some other names to throw at me. But this is near the top of my list for for Dallas, just because it's another wing who can shoot the lights out of the ball. Let me give you just his three point percentage over the past handful of years: forty four this year, thirty nine last year, thirty nine the year before, forty one the year before that, nice. 43, Whoa. 40. Whoa. and like this is consistent good shooting from the outside. Three different teams too. Yeah, three different teams, but he's also played in big games in the playoffs, including when they got smacked by Dallas. That's correct. In the first round last year. That's correct. Um, but I think he's a, a, a pretty versatile defender too, and he can run some of the some of the offense when Luca's off the floor. He can run like pick and roll, like run some offense through him, let him create a little bit, let him pass. So I just he is him and Kuzma. We'll talk about Kuzma. When you look at Ironically, when Kuzma said that statement about Dallas's role players being limited, <laughs> and you know, one of those conversations is, all right, well, what if Dallas looked at some of the spots around the roster and said, All right, instead of you being just like this perfect defined piece around Luca, what if they take that spot and add a little bit more versatility to one of those spots? To where you might sacrifice a little bit of defense, but you gain a little bit more versatility offense wise, be able to actually dribble the ball and do different stuff like that. Boyan's one of those dudes. I think Kyle Kuzma is one of those guys that would add versatility to one of the wing spots. So you're like, all right, you can dribble and create a shot. So I'm all here for it. The only, only thing a little bit is he is 33. He just signed the extension. And so he's locked in around that 20 million. He's making like 19.5 this year. He's at 20 next year, 19 after that. So you're paying him like $19 million when he's what? 35, 36 isn't the end of the world if it's a good deal i'm doing it he'd be a perfect fit in dallas not fully guaranteed that last year either so that that's also no there you go but but yeah you're wondering about that you're also wondering okay what do you what would you have to give up to get him probably a first round pick can the mavericks give up a first round pick in the name we're going to talk in the second segment kuzma as well they would have to give probably a pick in there is is bogdanovich a name that you're willing to give like let's just say let's start with one one first round pick, knowing what we know about the Mavs assets that they currently have and the problem that they currently have, which has always been for years, that second star and acquiring that second star. No, I, I mean, I love <laughs> I love his fit in Dallas. It's just you, you have to save the assets, that kind of asset, the first round picks for the second star swing. At some point, they're going to make the, the second swing of that. You know, they made it with KP. It didn't work. They're going to make another swing at some point. And they got to have all the assets for that. And I love Boyan. I think he'd fit great in Dallas. But the upgrade from one of the wings in Dallas to Boyan, I don't think is like locking you into a finals run uh, in that case. So I'm still waiting on the the big swing for the second piece. And, so I, and I'm with you. I think it does require a first round pick because he's under contract. So if yeah. you're Detroit, it's like, I mean, we'll just keep you got him locked. Whoever you're trading him to, you, you don't have to worry about free agency or anything. Like, you got him locked up for the rest of this year and two more years after that. So, it, like, it, to be enticed to trade him, you got to get something in return. Which is why so far they've been unwilling to trade him, right? I, I feel like it's just them playing coy and like, hey, we, we struck gold on this guy where we took him for the, you know, the, like, we took him for this, this weird trade that everyone is kind of confused about, and now he's playing really well for us and playing and shooting really well on a bad team. That's pretty hard to do. Yeah. Like it's hard to shoot really well on a team that's bad like that. And so he's playing well, and now they have this opportunity to cash in some more assets when they're a rebuilding team already. Seems like another name that hasn't really worked out for them as well as they hoped is Sadiq Bay. We we'll maybe talk about him a little bit later, but Hello. Um, they need to hit on some of these guys. They need some more bites at the apple because they're not hitting as as well as they maybe had hoped that they were, or as, as well as a team like Memphis has that rebuilt that rebuilt really quickly. So coming up, let's get into John Collins. Let's get into Kuzma. We talked, we mentioned his name a couple times. So we'll start with Kuzma and we'll get into him. Could he be the piece? Would he be worth? A potential pick if you wanted to send one to the Wizards. Now he's an expiring contract, basically. So that one's a little bit different. We'll talk about that and him coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want wherever you want from a community of local hosts. So there's local hosts in your area. And you can browse a huge selection of vehicles for just any occasion or budget across the US, the UK. 
Listen, European listeners, UK, Canada, and Australia. Book a spacious SUV, minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event. A birthday, Isaac Harris. Hello, that's me. You drove around a, a Tesla. I got to try that out. And uh, and use Turo to get it. You use Turo to get it, exactly. And in the middle of it, you turned on the, the radio, and all of a sudden it said, I'm going to buy Twitter. And then it just kind of like the radio just kind of fizzled out, and we didn't really know what was going on with it. But So you tried a Tesla there. You can go check out Turo, T-U-R-O. Go check it out. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms and conditions, and inclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. All right, Isaac Harris, we're continuing our talk about trade targets for the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks are connected to Boyan Bogdanovich, uh, also John Collins. But let's talk about Kuzma. He's not necessarily connected to the Mavs just yet. But according to an NBA source that that talked to Eric Pincus, they'll they'll all come around. Destiny comes all the same. According to a source that talked to Eric Pincus, uh, he wants out. He's looking for over $20 million a season in a big market or a con- or with a contender. He is making like $13 million this season, $13 million on a player option next year. So he's turning that down. He's probably not coming back to the Wizards unless they're the only ones that give him the money. Ask Davis Rattans, they may be the only ones that give him the, give him the money. Um, the Kings, Suns, and Knicks are the teams that have been um, considered as interested right now for Kyle Kuzma. But he's kind of a different name than what we've talked about. He's kind of, He fits that. That category of what you said, a guy that could fit around Luka. We've seen Kyle Kuzma play well around LeBron and go, you know, win a title. And then he can also do some stuff outside of Luka, too. He can kind of do both things where the Mavericks only seem to have, you know, one player or the other at this point. Yeah, he's 27 and he's having, I mean, I was going to say easily. I just want to double check. Easily is his career year so far. Yeah. Um, You know, at 21 points a game, like you said. Uh, he's not the best catch and shoot shooter um, when it just comes to like spotting up all that stuff, but I'm comfortable enough with it. I think he would fit great in Dallas too. I think he would yeah. be a, a good addition, a good young guy too. Younger, let's say that. It's 27. Sorry, Kirk, Kirk, younger. Kirk gets um, mad anytime you're like, that player is 26 years old. How can you call them young? <laughs> um, I think that the question with, with me with with Kuzma it's like yes he'd fit in Dallas yes I'd want him in Dallas sign me up all that stuff is what do you like what's the trade market for him because he's going to opt out and he is I mean right now he's playing really well so he's going to get a a good chunk of a new contract but like what are what are they getting like if you're Washington and you're going to trade him you got to get something that's going to last like past the deadline like one of the appealing things for Dallas's trade pieces is they have some expiring contracts, right? There's Christian Wood, there's Reggie Bullock, there's Dwight Powell, kind of Reggie Bullock, you know, that next year's, you know, half guaranteed, all that stuff. Yeah. Like they have some expirings that they could play around with. Washington is, isn't going to care about that, right? Like they're going to want either draft compensation, but here's the thing. Would Mavs fans trade Josh Green for Kyle Kuzma? Interesting. Would the fan base like would the fan base want that or agree with that? Because I think that's that's the we've been wondering, hey, what assets does Dallas have moving forward, especially after Brunson? And it's like we got the first round picks, we have expiring contracts. Josh, I think, has elevated his play enough to where it I think he could get you on the on the level of a Kuzma level. I don't think Josh is getting you, Josh with all the assets is getting you a second star, but can Josh get you a level, a player like a Bojan or Kuzma or something like that. I think he could. it's a conversation. Now, whether you want to or not, as a Mavs fan saying, some of you are like yelling at YouTube right now saying, <laughs> no, I would never give up Josh Green for Kyle Kuzma. What are you talking about? I always imagine somebody on the side of the highway like that had to pull over because they were yelling so loud that they had to like, they had to stop driving and they're screaming at their like their podcast, whatever player that they're using. I just, I just think that's the, it's going to take, it would take Josh for a first round pick, I think. To get Kyle Kuzma. For sure. And the Wizards are a team. I, I literally just talked to our Wizards host like 10 minutes ago about uh, the state of their team and about like, what's going on with their show and everything. And they were just like, they're so down bad. I mean, they just went on that terrible losing streak. Um, their top 10 pick from last year, Johnny Davis. I was Ooh. like, I was like, Ed, Ed Oliver, the host of Lock and Wizards. I was like, Ed, 
what's going on with Johnny Davis? Like, is, is he even good in the G League? And he goes, well, the other day he scored nine points. And I was like, so he's not. So he's not good in the G League. Like, we're trying to get Jaden Hardy minutes, and he's scoring 30 every time he goes out in the G League. And like, they, hey, Tyler Dorsey put up 47. Right? <laughs> yeah, so. Tyler, Tyler Dorsey. And uh, uh, Grant Riller. Grant Riller had like three 30-point yeah. games in a row for the Legends recently. And so – uh, yeah, like that. That's a disaster for them. Like they got to recoup some. They Denny has not been as good as they thought he was going to be. Rui keeps getting hurt. Like it just seems like and Corey Kispert, I do like just, Rui. all kinds of stuff. Like it just seems like anything that they hit is just not working well for them. They need some guaranteed assets. I don't know if Josh Green is that. Like I don't know if Josh Green in a couple seconds or in salary filler and hey, we'll send you send you Davis Bertans back. Like I don't know. Like that doesn't no, get it. That, do that. that doesn't get it done, right? Um. But is he worth a first-round pick? He he can create his own shot a little bit here and there. He's had 18 30-point games in his career. So, or 20 30-point games in his career. So, like, he can fill it up. He's had, like, he's he's shot, he catch and shoot, he's okay, right? Like, I look back through his numbers when you said that. I was thinking of even going back to his time with the Lakers. But he, also, okay. yeah. he also added some defensive prowess with the Lakers. Yep. He did not come out as a good defensive player at all early with the Lakers. And then he became, he really has grown into that and become a pretty decent defensive player. He could, he could fit in the Mavericks defensive system pretty well. And so you're like, okay, well he's starting to check off a bunch of boxes about things that the Mavericks need. Like a guy that can get his own shot, catch and shoots well enough, can defend, you know, is a little bit bigger. You're just like, okay, well if they can get him and re-sign him, he fits better. He fits better in their system than what Christian Wood is right now. Yeah. They gave up a first round pick for Christian Wood. You said it. I didn't. I said it. No, I mean, I'm just saying what I think that Jason Kidd would Adam, want. Adam, did you hear it? I'm just, it? I'm just saying what I think Jason Kidd wants right now, right? I think he fits better in, in that. Uh, Kidd knows him. You know, Kidd knows I mean, him. Yeah. He's LA, LA days. Already coached with him. And, and so I don't know. That's one I would think about because the West is so wide open. But, but does Kuzma take this team from a, from, all right, where they are right now, if they don't give up a ton of talent for him, does Kuzma take this team from, all right, they're middle of the pack right now to, all right, we're back on track, and we can win the West easily because, not easily, but you can see a path to win the West because it's just so wide open right now. Yeah, well, I mean, this brings it back to the whole, like, 2019 free agency, you know, like, all that <laughs> other... <laughs> what would Terrence Ross bring to the Mavs? You know, uh in that pursuit I'll talk about of Giannis, Jay Crowder right? a little bit later if you want to. <laughs> but like, you know, the whole thing with, oh. you know, you know, looking hindsight, looking back, you know, it, we it's love been a looking thing back. Over, over the past few weeks. I've seen some mass fans bringing that back up about the pursuit of Giannis and like, oh, Dallas is stupid for, you know, pursuing. I brought that up with the Harrison Martin trade recently. I'll, I'll never, I'll never be in the camp. There are plenty of things with Dallas that they've, they've done over the past, let's just say five years that I would say, man, that was a big mistake. Um, I just, I, I won't, I won't land on the possibility of pursuing Giannis to pair him with Luca as a big mistake. I just, I won't get there. So my, I bring that up because what if, what if that's a similar situation now in the sense of you're hoarding all the assets to chase this, could be fictional second star instead of spending the assets to try to get you know someone that's get, available like, yeah that that's available like what if kuzma is available what if Boyan's available and you're like man that would make our team better but we're keeping all the stuff because we're just waiting for that second star it's yeah. like will that second star ever become available so i i think it's that you're going back i mean we're going to go back and forth on it and i'm sure fans are listening to this or they're commenting whatever and it's like yeah, they, you feel one way or the other. Go for it now. Spend and try to get a Kuzma or whoever now. Who cares about the assets? And some of you are sitting there saying, like I am probably, it's, eh, I think I'd hold off because I think I'd wait to cash in my chips for a second star. Can Kuzma but, become that? I mean, you think he is already. <laughs> we had we always had this argument about, is Kuzma a star? And I was like, he's got his own shoe deal with Puma. Like, we he, argued that like three years ago. Four years ago, <laughs> yeah, it was a long, it was a long time ago before he was even a twenty point per game scorer, and uh, and I was like, well, there's different kinds of stars. Like he's You're like Kuzma is a star, and I'm like, he's not a star. You're like, no, he is a star. <laughs> he moves the he moves the social media needle more than like I don't know, probably name us the Bradley Beal. Like he he moves it more than Bradley Beal right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> then Boban's a star for sure. 
<laughs> he's got his own commercial where he holds a bunch of goldfish in his hands. That's a star. He starred in a movie. Star. Multiple movies. Star. <laughs> um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section. What do you think about Kyle Kuzma? Would you give up a first round pick? Maybe two to get Kyle Kuzma. Like, is no, that, heck no, not it, two. Is that no. worth it? Uh, to get to bring in for the Mavericks. So coming up, let's talk about some other names. John Collins mentioned Sadiq Bay, mentioned Jay Crowder before, a bunch of other names that are currently available in trade talks. Talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. It's the best place to check out the odds and lines inside and outside of sports. Go check it right now. Oh man, the World Cup. Messi moving on. Ooh. You gotta love it. Uh, do you think that the refs are in it? Are in <laughs> are in it for the fix for Messi? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Odds I mean, I really want a Brazil to win this thing, but I don't think they're fixing it. Odds to win the World Cup. Argentina minus 120. France plus 125. Morocco plus 1,100. Morocco is just the, the underdog here. They yeah, are. I'm sorry, sorry, Morocco, but we need a France-Argentina final. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. I, I, Morocco, the first African country to ever be it, at this stage. Like, that's a pretty good story. To make it, it is a the, really good story. I just I'm in this I like to see two powerhouses go at it in the finals. Before. Yeah, for sure. So you can check out World Cup stuff. You can check out basketball, NBA stuff, NFL stuff, college football, all kinds of other things. I bet online. It's where the game starts. All right, Isaac Harris. Let's keep talking about some trade targets. I'm going to go a little more rapid fire in this one. This is a name we have talked about before, but he was linked again to the Dallas Mavericks and. The Hawks have had several teams in the John Collins market, including the Jazz, the Wizards, the Nets, and the Mavericks. Thoughts on John Collins for the Dallas Mavericks? I think, you know, we went into this pod saying, all right, Bojan, Collins, Kuzma, let's talk about those three. And I, I literally put most desired Bojan, I put biggest swing, Kuzma, and I put most realistic, John Collins. Interesting. Um. I say that because I think when you look at like the Detroit, let's compare those three. When you look at Detroit and Washington, I think they're going to be seeking that draft compensation. It's like, hey, we need a first round pick for one of these guys. I think for Atlanta, it's more of swapping the pieces. And I think that's that's the move that I lean towards a little bit more of that I think Dallas might do or more more realistic of, hey, let's look at the contracts we have and how can we just swap out some pieces for some other contracts around the league? Whether it's expirings, whether it's not a bad contract, whatever it is. So Collins, 25 years old, makes 23.5 this year, then 25.3 next year, then 26.5, then a player option after that for 26.5. Um, that's a lot of money. Yeah. For John Collins. Um, he's having a down year so far. The weird thing, I was talking with somebody the other day, actually in the press box about it, about how weird this the tweener category is now so weird because you go back like five years ago and the john collins type everybody's dying for him like six nine stretch you know, four athletic. give me a stretch yeah. four and and now you're like well crap what do you do with him because he's he's too small to play the five but he's not gonna defend on the perimeter and he's not like you're not gonna put him like are you going to play him with Capella all the time? Like, like Atlanta's doing. So like, do you have to play him with a, it's kind of like the Christian Wood. I say, this sounds like a very similar problem with the maps. Have. A, a, a little bit. So that's it. But the, the exception is Christian Wood, I think defends better than John Collins, especially <laughs> like around the rim. Uh, at least Christian Wood like raises his hand, defends some shots and stuff like that. So um, that's, that's my thing. I lean a little bit more away from this one, like from a desirable standpoint, but if you're telling me Dallas approached Atlanta and said, all right, let's look at our contracts on both of our books and let's try to swap out some pieces and see if it helps both of our teams. There's a fit in Dallas where you're saying, all right, pick and pop, pick and roll, same Christian Wood stuff with Luca. You you kind of squint and see it. I'll, I'll take out for John Collins. I think he's a better defender than, than Christian Wood at this point. But Okay, cool. Is Do you have a it's, Collins jersey it's, next to your Luca shoes <laughs> too? Go, or? Let's go. It's not enough. It's not enough for me to make that make that deal. It's not enough to do like to even just swap. Like, what if you could just swap John Collins for Christian Wood, and then Atlanta gets off the contract. Dallas gets a guaranteed player that's better in the better in the role game. That's you know maybe bigger can fit in their system a little bit better. Bigger as in like bulkier can fit in their system maybe a little better. 
but not even not much better because Christian Wood's a better three point shooter than him. So you're like, okay, well, what are we really swapping here? Um, yeah, I mean, I will say Collins three point shooting before this year, like this year, it's like really bad. But before bad. this year, it's 36, 40, 40. I know, but so Christian, like Christian Wood's been a no, yeah, 36, yeah, 40, 40. Christian Wood's been a th better three point shooter. I think long. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I was just saying that Collins has shot a good 37 or yeah. above the past three seasons before this. Well, my, I actually have a fake trade for you if you want. My point before this was to even swap John Collins and Christian Wood this year. If if Atlanta wanted off the contracts, Mavericks wanted the guarantee. You have to add nine more million dollars on the Mavericks side in order to get John Collins. Like you'd have to add Bullock or Dwight like Bullock. or somebody. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to add one of those guys to it. And I know like some of you may be wanting to do that. I, I I'm not willing to do that right now. That's a lot of money to lock into for no. the job, Collins. So what if they did the whole conversation with Atlanta and said, hey, let's just swap out contracts here. Um, John Collins, Bogdanovich for Christian Wood. The other the Bogdanovich. Bo Bogdan yeah, Bogdanovich. Bogdan, yeah. Uh, for Christian Wood, Bullock, and Tim Hardaway. So Collins and Bogdanovich. So you're, you're doing, instead of our two-for-one trade we've been talking about, you're doing a three-for-one. You're a getting. Three for two. A th yeah, three for two, right. You're getting Collins and, and Wood. They switch spots. Maybe that's an upgrade for the Mavs if they consider that a better fit. You're getting uh, Bogdanovich, who's a little bit better of a playmaker off the bench. You're getting that guy that can maybe be the third ball handler in, in definitely in, in certain situations. You're losing you're losing a perimeter defender in Bullock. You're losing your fill-it-up guy in Tim Hardaway. That's interesting. So then, you're, then, you're, then Josh Green moves up to the starting unit. Yeah. And... You're starting Luca, Dinwiddie, Josh Green, Dorian, and Dwight, and then off the bench, you say have it. Bog, you have Bogdan, say it. John Collins, say it. Maxi, and Jaden Hardy. Hardy, let's go party. That's right. You're making the space for him, which is what we talked about. The re the only way Jaden Hardy will get real minutes is if they do. A two for one or a two or a, or a yeah a two for one or a three for two type trade like this. That one's interesting to me. How long is Bogdanovich uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich still under contract for? He's got um, this year at eighteen million and a player option for eighteen million next year. So you're playing with fire he's, on that one. He's. I mean, you are, but yeah, and he's I, and he's thirty. He's a lot older than you think he is. You are, but but still, even if he opts out, like. You see what I'm saying? Like the 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 long term Tim money kind of equals out to John Collins. That's fair. The other two guys are yeah. kind of like expiring contracts. So you know you're swapping out pieces. Now you have a bench unit of Bogdan, John Collins. You know Maxi's still there. I think if you get John Collins more than Christian Wood, you got to play him with Maxi. Like there's no other scenarios in which yeah. John Collins is playing with Dwight or Javel or anybody else. Like John Collins got to play with Maxi. So you play him with Maxi. You have Bogdan running the second unit, Jaden Hardy out there. I'm not saying I would do this. I'm just saying that's a type of. I think that's more realistic because I don't think you're. I don't think you're adding crap to that, and I think that's more picks realistic. Or anything, yeah, yeah. I don't think there's other picks and stuff. I think that's a more realistic type of trade Dallas is looking to do right now than first round picks and all that. Let's throw out some other names that are available. Sadiq Bay is a name that's available for the Pistons right now. He's been kind of a disappointment for them this season. Uh, at one point, we were your mouth. furious with the Mavs for not drafting him instead of Josh Green. And uh, I don't know, man. It seems like those things are intersected, and I'm cool with Josh That's Green wild. right now. I'm Okay. I'm going to say this right now. It became a thing on Twitter not so long ago about Sadiq Bey and the, were they really going to take him or whatever. I can tell you that they were there was a portion of that draft room that did want Sadiq Bey. Yeah. And that is – I was texting with somebody in the draft room that night so it wasn't a two weeks later type of sadiq bay story buyers, out buyers or, or, remorse or, thing. yeah yeah no it was a yes that was a real conversation but um yeah he's had more you know last year was a good year for him playing all 82 games but i would still definitely be interested i'm not giving a first round pick but i'd be interested in it yeah and so then what would what would the pistons want at that point would you do josh for sadiq bay straight up no, Josh is looking better than Sadiq. Right That's now. kind of amazing, right? Like I know it's wild. Yeah. Um, Jay Crowder's available. Eric Gordon's available for a first round pick. What about some of these like veteran wings? Definitely not getting up first for Eric Gordon. Um, I mean, I like these guys. I'm just not getting up first for them. Yeah. So it 
I think it's going to come down to like trade deadline, like to the actual deadline that all these teams right now are going to be telling everybody, Hey, we want first, we want first for Eric Gordon. We want first for all these guys. And then it's going to get within the last hour, within the last 30 minutes. And it's like, Oh crap, we're not going to get a first, but we don't want to lose it for nothing. And then that's when you see a settle. Oh, Houston won at first, but they really traded Eric Gordon for an expiring and two second round picks. So I've seen a name in, uh, I think it's even been in our YouTube comments, but Cam Reddish has been a name that's been all around Twitter. And uh, I know that for the most part, like Twitter isn't the coach, but what are your thoughts on Cam Reddish? I mean, cool. Like, I thought I remember, the I'm I thought the Hawks won the trade, Isaac. Yeah. I thought that I thought they won the trade. I thought they did with Cam Reddish. Now he, now no one wants him. I was getting ready to say that that I was. I'm I said I literally remember. just set you up for that. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember Cam Reddish being the reason why the Hawks won. The trade. And now Trey Young's like going going to blow through another coach here. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just don't know where. Like, I'm just not interested in going and trying to like get cam reddish if, no. if it's like a three-team trade and you're just like hopping in and it's like yeah we'll just take him type thing then sure but i'm not going out like actively pursuing cam reddish and saying yeah we just added cam reddish to our team <laughs> there it is that's the answer in two years not... like is he playing over any of your wings right now no, no he's not like, playing not over playing he's in... not playing over hardy i know that's what i'm saying like i'm not playing him over reggie either so no. I, I don't know yeah no uh, again, there's a, another uh, from James Edwards of the Athletic yeah, that, that the <laughs> that the uh, the Mavs, the Blazers, the Kings, and the Heat have been engaged the most when it comes to Nerlens Noel. Yeah, I'm I'm down. I he would fit good in Dallas. I think that is them being interested in Nerlens is, you know, very telling that they're working on other bigger stuff too because i just i don't see a world in which they add nerlands and they don't offload one of their other bigs like to, to roster nerlands javel dwight maxi christian wood like all of them like what what are we doing at that point but yeah throwing a big throwing a big block party is what we're, what we're throwing i'm i would love to meet up with nerlands in the media dining room again <laughs> Hot dogs, hot dogs. All right, that's some trade targets. Let us know in the comment section below. Who's the number one player on your trade wish list? Guys, thanks for making us your first listen. Go check out Locked On Sports Today, the podcast that covers the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, the take of the day, available on on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom.